Now, in this lecture, we are going to understand how to work with component did update lifecycle log. The component did update function is a part of update phase of the React component lifecycle. Component did update is called when a component got updated. Keep in mind, component did update gets called after the render method, which means we can access the DOM node in it. This function receives previous property and state as a parameter. The component did update method allows us to execute the React code when the component is updated. All the network requests that are to be made when the props passed to the component changes are coded here. Let's take a look at a very simple example to understand how this component did update method work in the React update phase lifecycle log. So I'm going to just back to my updating.js file and here this is my previous video example. So let me just use it. I have here a constructor. Inside this constructor, I'm going to just change the state and here I'm going to say level and I'm going to change this value as well. The value is going to be zero. Just out of that, right here, I'm going to just print console.log constructor called and just after that, right here, I'm going to say this dot state dot level. So I'm going to just print the value of this initial state. Let me get rid of this console right from here. Just after that, I need this component did mount method as well. Inside it, I have here set timeout function. What I'm going to do is after three seconds, I'm going to execute this statement. This statement is going to update the value of the state. As you know, we have the key level. Let me just update it here as well. And I'm going to just increase the level by one. So I'm going to pass here one. Just after that, I'm not using this get snapshot before update method because we already learned it in the previous lecture. Let me just comment this method. Just down here, I have here component did update. I will get back to this method after a few seconds. Just for now, let me just get rid of this change here. This handler method. And just down here, I'm going to create a new JSX. So I'm going to just first show you how you can style your inline JSX. We all know there are different methods you can use to style the JSX. Now, let me show you the inline styling of the JSX. Here, I'm going to create h1 heading tag like this. And inside this h1, I'm not going to pass anything. Instead, I'm going to use this h1 to style the JSX. So to this h1, here I'm going to specify property called style. Using this style property, you can style your JSX element. I'm going to say here style is equal to and in this curly braces, you can style your CSS. But when you specify your curly braces, you need to wrap your styling inside another curly braces like this. This will allow you to create an object of styling. So this will create an object and pass that object to the style property and that will specify the style to this H1 heading tag. So I'm going to just create an object here and inside it, I'm going to pass styling to this h1 heading tag. So here I'm going to say margin. As you can see, I'm going to have here different properties of CSS. And I'm going to just specify here margin. And in the single quote, I'm going to say auto. Just down here, I'm going to say width. Width is going to be 50%. Just down here, I'm going to just simply specify padding. Padding is going to be, and just out of that, I'm going to say margin top. Margin top is going to be 10%. After that, I'm going to say border. Border is going to be solid, one pixel, and then specify here a border color. So I'm going to just specify X color here. And just out of that, I'm going to say text align, which is center. After that, at the last, I'm going to specify font size is going to be 18 pixel, just like this. So you can notice how easy it is to style your component using inline styling. We all know there are different methods you can style the JSX. That's, that's upon you. But I will suggest to use a different methods rather than using inline styling. Just for that, inside this H1 heading tag, here I'm going to create a division tag. I'm going to specify ID to it. So I'm going to pass here hash and specify after. Now inside this H1 heading tag, here I'm going to print my state, the after state. Now let me save this file back to the top. And as you can see, I have here a component called component did update. As I said earlier, component did update method allows you to execute the React code when the component is updated. In the previous example, we used this component did update. When you implement this component did update, you will get two parameters. First is a previous property. So I'm going to say here previous props. And second is previous state. You will get both these parameters when you implement this component did update. Now what I'm going to do is let me just change this text. And here I'm going to say component did update just like this. 
Just after that, let me just show you what you will get with this parameter. At the top, here I'm going to say console.log and inside it, I'm going to simply print my properties and state. So here I'm going to say previous properties. So I'm going to just say here props. So I'm going to just call this previous parameter here. Let me duplicate this statement and change this previous props to previous state. And I'm going to change this text as well. I'm going to say previous state. Let me just save this file and try to execute it. When I reload the browser, as you can see, after 3 seconds, I'm going to get here component did update 1. You can notice here in my example, I just use here set timeout. After 3 seconds, I'm going to change the state property. So after 3 seconds, you can notice React will first call the constructor, then it will call the render method, and when the state updates, React will call the render method again. And after that, after the render method, React will call component did update hook to update the property or state of the component. You can notice here, I don't have any property to update. So the React will return an empty object. But I have here a previous state. So React will return the level 0. Because the previous value of the state is 0. So I'm going to get here level 0. Now, did you notice you can access the previous property and state using this hook. And this hook is executing after render method. So this is the benefit for us to use the previous state or property of the component after the render method. So this method is useful when you need something to be the absolute last thing to be executed. So I hope you understand how to work with component did update method in the React application. Next we are going to talk about the unmounting phase of the React component lifecycle.